On today's motor house, LED headlights, are they legal? Are they easy to fit? Are they any good? Stay tuned to find out. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Motor House. And today it's Land Rover time with my 1988 110 V8 called Lara. So winter is finally upon us. The nights are getting darker and Lara here is increasingly gonna become my daily driver. So that means with these dark nights and whatever, I'm gonna need to see where I'm going. So today's installment of Motor House is all about these things. We're talking headlights. Now, the headlights I've got here on Lara are, frankly, a bit crap. So I've been thinking for a while, what can I do to improve the light output, reliability, and all of that kind of stuff on a classic car? So that leads us to today's installment of Motorhouse, where I'm gonna be looking into the legalities, the fitting, and the result of fitting the cheapest LED headlights I could find on eBay. Well, what we've got here are what are called seven inch round headlights. And they're the kind of headlight that you'll find on loads and loads of classic cars. From Land Rovers like this to MX-5s, classic minis, even things like E-Type Jags, it's amazing how many cars actually use the ubiquitous seven inch round headlight. What I've currently got fitted are halogen headlight upgrades. They're pretty cheap, pretty cost effective. They're still pretty crap. One of the big technologies that's made its way through, especially into the classic car scene over the last decade or so, is that of LED lighting. It's a solid state technology, so there's no filament or anything that, that can burn out. An LED light generally gives out a brighter, cleaner light. They pull a lot less current than an incandescent bulb. So if you have older vehicles like this, where quite often the headlights don't go through relays, the entire current that's going to the headlights is through the headlight switch, then you're taking a lot of load off an old electrical system. Another nice advantage for me is that a lot of those LED headlight units are completely sealed and waterproof, which uh, if you have a look at mine, when you have an off-roader, sometimes they can fill up with water, which uh, no, no one needs that do they so let's talk legality and as you can see i got a piece of paper with me because this is an important one there's a lot of confusion as to what's actually legal to fit to your car and i'm not really surprised because at the minute the legislation in the uk at least is not as clear as it could be i'll read this straight away this is directly from the dvsa vehicles first used before 1st of april 1986 are not required to use type approved e marked headlamps Therefore, converting a halogen or other headlamp on such a vehicle to use LED bulbs would not be in contravention of the regulations. Right, so what does that all mean? What does that mean? If you've got a car that was registered before the 1st of April 1986, you can fit whatever you want to it. That means you could fit LED replacement bulbs into your existing headlight assembly. And that might be something you want to do because it means that you can preserve the aesthetics of a traditional headlight with improved technology. However, if your car was made after 1986 or registered after 1st of April 1986 and this is the crucial bit your headlights must be e marked to pass a UK MOT test just ensure that the LED lights you're fitting to your car are e marked that seems to be the simplest thing so uh, Laura here was first registered in 1988 so that means that I can't fit LED bulbs in these headlights However, what I can do is upgrade to e-marked complete LED headlight assemblies. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I headed over to eBay and looked to buy the cheapest e-marked LED seven inch round headlights I could find. Here, in all their glory, is the result. I had a look over on eBay. The advert, as you can see, guarantees lowest prick 
and highest quality, which I find that lowest prick and highest quality always instills confidence. And if that wasn't enough, these headlights come, allegedly, with a one-year warranty. How much did I pay for these bad boys? Well, the advert itself said 2099 sold singly. Now, that seemed pretty cheap to me, so I thought, okay, uh, they'll come individually boxed, so uh, you can buy two for a discount, it was, so 40 quid for a pair of headlights, that sounds good to me. What have I actually got? Are, are two complete sets here, so I'm sure these will find their way into something else. The, these e-marked, LED headlights with uh, running lights and everything were basically 20 quid posted. Can they really be any good for that price? All right then, what do you get in the box for 20 quid? So let's have a look, let's open this up. It's all fairly plain generic packaging. Open this up. Now, this is somewhat inspiring is there is actually an operating manual. Am I allowed to do this? Because installation shall be completed by professional personnel. <laughs> Nearly all the pictures reference a Jeep, in fact a JL Jeep Wrangler, right? and you've got various things talking about connections and so on and you'll see all the pictures here for a jeep these are obviously originally manufactured to appeal to the jeep aftermarket but thankfully still seven inch round headlights so let's take one out of the packaging now there we are these are in fact e marked at the top here what we've got on the back is this is actually really nice this is a metal casing it's not plastic and here's your main wiring connector, which has an H4 style plug. So that just plugs directly into what would be the socket for your regular H4 headlights. And then there's a couple of spade connectors here, which these interface with your uh, side light feed and indicator feed, and mean that the DRL light around the side comes on as a running light and also we'll change color to orange for indicating. Again, interestingly enough, it gives you an idea of what the original market for this was, is they come with this handy adapter, uh, which we don't need. All right, so now we've had a look at what we've got for the money, all we've got to do is start stripping down the front end of the Land Rover and get those fitted. Let's go for it. So first off involves removing the light units themselves. You'll have to do this on any car you're doing this mod to. It's made a little bit easier in my case because I've changed to the later NAS style lights. Off comes the headlight surround and then out comes the headlight itself to see the mess behind. Ugh. Well that was remarkably quick. Um, handful of screws and you've managed to gain access to the headlight bowl and all the light fittings. This is what a <laughs> 30 plus year old headlight bowl looks like the bottom of it is completely missing and rotted out. I did anticipate for such eventualities, which is why I have bought a brand new replacement pair of headlight bowls. If your car's never had the headlights changed in decades, the chances are that quite possibly your headlight bowls might be in as bad a state as that. And for another 20 quid, just get them in. You'll need them eventually. Well, here's rather what I feared that would put a spanner in the works. Having to remove this headlight bowl means that I'm also going to have to unthread and remake all of this wiring here. Because as you can see, you cannot get that H4 headlight plug through the bowl. So this all has to come out and at the same time, ugh, look at these. These are what's called a bullet type connector where all that makes the connection is friction between these two. Those live up in that top corner of the wheel arch where you can see the evidence where water gets up there, where they're super prone to having all kinds of issues. Whilst I'm having to do some wiring anyway to put in the feeds for the side lights and the indicators, this really is an ideal time to tidy up any nasty old fashioned wiring what I'm going to do, and it's my personal choice, is I'm going to solder these and heat shrink them. 
Um, I'm sure there'll be a big old discussion in the comments down there. Fight amongst yourself, but uh, for now it's time for me to fire up the soldering iron. It's at this point in the project you'll quickly realise that these are not a plug and play solution. I had to remove this section of wiring from the old headlight bowls and prep it for the new LED lights which involves wiring in new feeds for the DRLs, the side lights and wiring connectors on them. Alright then, here we go, we are moving on with things. So that is this side headlight prepped and finished. We've got the original H4 connector in there. What I've added in are the additional feeds for the side light and indicator. Now this is the section of the project that without a doubt took the most amount of time and was the most fiddly. As you'll have seen what I really wanted to do was eliminate those old bullet connectors whilst I was adding new wiring. So that involved going in cutting the old wiring in situ which meant as you can see I had to reach in via the headlight bowl itself solder heat shrink make all those new connections and at the same time it allowed me a chance to add in the new feeds for the DRL lights and the side lights even if you don't want to tidy up your old wiring you are going to have to wire in those additional feeds for the DRLs which you will tap off from the side light feed and you'll also have to tap into your indicator feed if you want the flashing orange halo effect. That's up to you. Whilst you're in there, if you've got an old vehicle like my Land Rover or any other old shonk, I strongly advise that you investigate the quality of your wiring and tidy up and make amends whilst you're in there. Do it once, do it right. was a lot more hard work than I was expecting. Exciting time now is fit this headlight bowl here into this aperture here. And uh, well, next time you see it, we, we might actually have them done. Your last thing to do is test the wiring, plug the light in, check everything works correctly. I mean, why wouldn't it, right? Guess which idiot uh, managed to wire the dip beam and the main beam the wrong way around. Check your wiring everyone, because as it happens, blue and red and blue and orange, <laughs> when it's dark and you're on the inside of the wing, look very, very similar. Um, anyway, that's all working now. I've done a test, so I'm gonna bolt all of that back together and then we'll be able to have a test. Let's, let's go for it. With your wiring all tested out, and if you're completely happy everything's working properly, time to bolt it all back together. Make sure that the headlight itself is properly located within the outer ring. Put all your trim back on, put it all back together, cross your fingers, here we go. Well, that has taken a lot longer than I hoped it would do. However, are you ready? You ready? Eh? All in and working? How spanky does that look? Certainly from this side of the car, which is where the LED side is off uh, the Land Rover behind. You can really see how much brighter it is. Now, um, that's taken so long that it's actually rapidly approaching midnight, so I'm gonna thrash on, get the other side done, and we'll pick up when I've got all of the car done, back together, and uh, we'll go and do a light test. It's not the following day, thanks to the wonders of television. This is in fact a week on from when you saw me last in the garage. And um, well, what are my impressions on things? Well, let's go back to answering the three questions that we asked at the beginning. Are they legal? Are they easy to fit? And are they any good? All right, so the first question, are they legal? 
Hopefully, yes, they are. As I explained earlier, they're E-marked headlights. Certainly, they seem to give a decent beam pattern and a decent spread of light. I can't see any issues with these not passing an MOT test. Are they easy to fit? Well, now then, there is a question. I would have to say it depends. I'd certainly say that they're not plug and play, especially if you want the DRL and the indicator light functions to do, you are going to have to do some wiring work. Are they any good? I can absolutely hand on heart say yes. And for the money, they're astonishingly good. Now, this isn't a truly scientific test, but um, I drove to a local industrial estate to do a before and after demo. The astute of you will notice that I was a little bit closer to the wall with the LED lights than the, the halogen lights. But I'm sure you'll immediately get a really good idea of the difference between the two light setups. I would say that as a reference, the light output on the DRL lights on these LEDs now is equivalent to what you'd have had from the dipped beam on the old halogen lights alone. Switching to dipped beam on the LEDs now gives, uh, and I'm not making this up, a similar level of light output to what I get from the Lytronic Xenon light units on the 911. They, they really are that good. Main beam output, I would say, is better as well. I'll leave you to judge yourself from, from what you've seen from those bits of videos, but definitely fully recommended. Are there any downsides to doing this swap? Um, well, I suppose the main and obvious one, which you could consider both uh, an upside and a downside, depending on your point of view, is the aesthetic of these things. Um, they don't look like classic car headlights. It's actually one of the reasons I held off on doing this swap for so long, because I initially was a bit reticent. I didn't want this to look all blingy. I personally, I'm really happy with the look of this. I think it's really given Mylandia sharp, fresh new look. Other than that, I can't find a single reason why you wouldn't do this. It's got to be the best 20 quid on a car I think I've ever spent. This is uh, definitely a, a two thumbs up mod from me. Well, that's about it from this particular instalment of Motorhouse. Um, hope you enjoyed this one. Much more of a hands-on garage workshop type video. If you enjoy these kind of videos, let us know in the comments. Let us know what you'd like to see us getting up to. Are there any kind of mods or workshop stuff you'd like to see us cover? Let us know. We'll do our very best. Um, if you'd like to help us out, please hit subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like on this, and from me, Mr. Bob, we'll see you again on another episode soon of Motorhouse.